Hello and welcome to this demonstration of SC Stream for modelling the thermal behaviour of your packaged electronics. SC Stream um, is a wizard driven CFD package that uses a very simple gridded mesh. So I'm going to just run through a demonstration based around a Raspberry Pi um, packaged computer. So I'm going to read my CAD data, which I have simplified somewhat in a CAD system. Um, but you can see I get a preview of the CAD geometry there. Go through next. So because I want to model the external convection, um, you can see that the, the package has automatically set my air domain here with the dotted red line to be immediately larger than the thing I've just imported. I want to have some free air around it to model convection. So I go here to extend the surroundings. You can see that in the in the XY plane, the, the characteristic length is 90 mil here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend by 90 mil in both directions in the X and Y and then the characteristic dimension in the in the depth is 27 mil so what I'm going to do is use two of those below and five above so if I preview my air volume there you can see what it's going to look like look like so I go next to say I want to model a turbulent flow analysis and I go here um, and I'll pick the linear low Reynolds number um, for reasons that I won't go into. Um, heat solve, and then I can force a high speed calculation, which basically, knowing that it's a, a free convection, makes uh, adjustments in the solver to finish up the process, to sp speed up the process. Next, um, just check that gravity is in the correct direction. So minus Z, yes, and my, my default initial temperature at 20 centigrade sounds good. Um, I can now set up the boundary conditions of the, the fluid volume here and because I know I want uh, external natural convection I can choose that and what that does is it sets the boundary conditions on the faces of the, uh, of the volume. So then I just hit finish and SC Stream will go ahead and, and import all of the components. Um, as you can see it's brought those in and if I go into the model tree here, you can see if I turn off the upper casing, you can see the components internally there. So what I'm going to do, basically, I'm really interested in uh, a quick assessment of the airflow within this this uh, system to look at where uh, where it comes in, where it goes out, with the major components included that will be blocking the various apertures on the cases. Um, I'm not going to model all of them in huge detail. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to change all the part settings together, uh, change them from being an obstacle, which is literally a, a, a rigid obstacle to airflow, and actually make them into a solid, and then give them a material property so that uh, thermal conduction can be modeled within them. So I'm just going to go in here, um, and I'm going to make them all of polycarbonate resin. Um, I can then go through individually turn off the upper casing again and I can make um, changes to that. So if I go to the main integrated circuit, see here it's picked up the polycarbonate resin. Well I'm going to change that to a silicon resin and I'm going to tell it, say it's generating some heat, which it is. So say it's 0.6 watts of heat. Okay, You can see now that one's gone red in the menu which indicates that it's generating heat. Uh, the other component that generates heat of interest in here is the PCB itself. So the heat generation for the PCB in an idle state is 0.4 watts, um, but the material very definitely isn't the polycarbonate resin. It's a, it's a laminate. You have copper on top and bottom, which means it can conduct uh, heat and electricity in the XY plane much better than it can in the Z plane through the, uh, the, the, the resin of the board. So I'm going to go in here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a laminated material to suit my needs here. So I go into editing mode and I will create a laminated material. So my first layer is going to be copper. So I can go into the, uh, the library of materials that are provided. So I call, so it automatically picks up on the properties out of there, call it copper. I'm going to say it's covering 75% of the board and it's about 0.05 mil thick. So add that. My next layer is an epoxy. So if I go back into the uh, rubber plastics and I pick up the epoxy like that and it's going to be 3 mil thick um, and I add that and then my last layer again is copper. 
uh, but this one's only going to be 60% covered and it, again it's going to be 0.05 mil thick. So I have to change the name to be unique. Then I can calculate equivalent properties, density, specific heat, etc. and then register that and it appears in the library there as a new material. And then I can set PCB to be made of that material. Right, with the rest of them, for the purposes of this analysis, I'm just going to leave them as polycarbonate. Uh, I can go back in and rerun it with those in, in more detail. Right, so turn the upper casing back on. Um, as I said in the introduction, this is all wizard driven, so I can go through my condition settings. So as you can see, a lot of the things I chose um, are in the initial wizard are populated in here. So I could go through and make some settings. I could change the direction of gravity to say it was resting on its side, uh, change information about the fluid region, what my boundary conditions are. Um, but all I'm really going to do in here is I'm going to go into the steady state analysis settings and I'm going to give it a few more extra cycles just to, uh, to give it time to converge if it needs it. Um, and then hit finish. So that updates all my boundary conditions. So I have I have uh, geometry defined, I've told software what it's made of, I've told it what the boundary conditions are, the initial temperatures and the heat generation. The last thing I need is a mesh on here. So first thing we do is we go into what's called the gridding tool. Um, and that allows us to set up a uh, the grids and just see, uh, get an assessment of um, of how many elements I'm looking at. So the def default setting um, picks up on representative features in all of the parts and grades out on a two to one ratio of, of element size. Uh, and that's going to predict to me just over 32 million cells, which is far too large for my laptop and for doing a, a simple assessment on this part. So I'm going to go to a uniform mesh instead. And I'm going to tell it that I've got a budget of, let's say, five million cells and I redo the gridding and then let's just look at it on the y direction you can see there uh, if I change the view to line that actually that's quite a coarse mesh on that um, and not really what I want so if I go into here I can create a sub block um, based on the bottom component there and I'm just going to increase the depth to 28 to say I'm, I want a sub block within which I'm going to do a more refined mesh. Okay, so I go back to the basic setting and I say I want a three to one refining on that. So now if I look in the Y direction, you can see I have a much finer mesh on a three to one basis uh, and then grading out to a larger mesh there with just under five million cells. So I can go through this in, in much more detail. I can put sub blocks within blocks, um, but for purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and mesh this now. So that's meshed. If I go back in here and I turn off the upper casing, you can see how the components are meshed, how it's picked up on uh, basically how the how the components overlie the mesh, and if they if the mesh cell fits within the solid entity that's brought in it's defined as being made of that and if not it's made of air. So turn that back on. I'll go file save. The next thing I'm going to do is run this. So I click on here for the solver so it says to close the boot processor and launch the solver. And then I can execute that. The runtime on this is going to be uh, not something you want to sit and watch. So we will we will cut to the end and go through some basic post processing. Thank you very much. Okay, so the analysis is run, and you can see from the plot that the temperature of the major parts, minimum and maximum temperatures, have all reached a steady state. And also the start and end time is giving us a, a runtime of about 15 minutes there. So the next thing I want to do is look at some of these results in the post processor. So we import the result file to the post processor here. Um, and we've got a number of things we can do. So the, the thing we're most interested in is the temperature of the, the, the major components in there. Um, so we want to do a contour plot on the surface. 
We don't want to look at the temperature of the air, but of the components. So we turn that off and then we go into the surface here and we turn on the contour of temperature. So it's showing on the scale 20 degrees to 73 degrees. Um, and if I go in and I turn off the visibility of the upper casing, you can see that the, obviously the, the IC is the hottest part and the temperature fades away from that across the circuit board. Um, so that's probably at the upper end of the operating temperature for that particular component. So we want to have a look at what the, what the airflow is actually doing. So if I back out of here and I turn on streamlines. So this is a, a global streamline that's showing the airflow and as you'd expect with the free convection and gravity in the z direction the, the air is flowing um, up and around it and I'm plotting the temperature of the airflow, um, actually no, I'm not I'm plotting the velocity of the airflow on the streamlines itself. A little bit confusing, you can see that most of it's going around and even the streamlines that start right in the center are flowing around which tends to suggest that the uh, events there aren't doing their job properly. So if I go in and I just do some um, trimming on that, so I want to look at one end of the, the box itself, so I turn on the clipping, and then I can look at some detailed streamlines here. So not that one, but that one. So much denser packed streamlines and you can see again that some of these streamlines are coming up almost centered on the on the vents but are flowing around and also that a lot of the airflow that's circulating above the IC itself is coming in through the, the slot where the uh, the pin array is now that pin array is used in practice to provide um, power supply to to external components on a on a Raspberry Pi so that's going to get blocked very quickly, meaning that we will have uh, further problems with this particular um, layout. So um, one other thing we can do is we can look at, um, if I turn off the trimming again, if we go to plane three here, we can look at how the, the air velocity varies as we, as we scroll through the part there. So if I go to plane three, and then I can auto move there. So as you see, as the plane that cuts through the part moves, you can see the, the change in the, the uh, direction of the airflow. So what we probably want to do with this part now is look at opening some more vents, perhaps on the side, um, and even perhaps enlarging the casing slightly so that we get airflow around the sides of the PCB from the, the vents below. Obviously, just a very simple overview of uh, SC Stream. There are many more capabilities. We have the ability to, to uh, create more detailed representations of components, uh, such as integrated circuits, and even the PCB itself. We can import a Gerber plot um, to create a detailed map of the copper on the, the layered board. We can also have uh, detailed models of fans, so we can get into some internal force convection to improve our, our heat flow. Um, all of these things uh, can be put in a library of standard parts, meaning that when you import a, uh, an assembly like this, you can very quickly populate it with, with parts that you are um, familiar with, making the job of setting up the analysis very easy. And as you saw, the process of generating a mesh and running analysis is, is pretty straightforward as well. Thank you very much for your attention.